salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. You right on that? That the little bit extra. Huh? I don't think. That's... Hallelujah! It's lovely. The question is though. Are we Jesus Christ. Can we try it one more time? So can we go to unison for that? Only for the yeah. There's salvation in your name. There's salvation in your name. There's salvation in your name. Ooh, if we just glide on it. Jesus Christ, my living. Hallelujah, praise the one who said be free, hallelujah, death has lost his grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my name. How cool is that? So we're going to forget the anything? Caleb, can I just hear Battle Belongs beginning? Great, thanks, buddy. That, that's for... Uh, the dark with a burning light of noon
Good evening, good evening. Welcome to the Wednesday evening prayer service. Is somebody ready to pray tonight? Amen, amen. Okay, so that was 10%. Let's try again. Is somebody ready to pray tonight? Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. We are here to praise the Lord and to seek His face, be it for ourselves, be it for our neighbors, our family, our church, and the world. Amen because we serve a living God. Let us stand up as we enter into that place of the presence of the Lord. Father, we bless you. We welcome you. If you're watching us online, you are welcome in the house of the Lord in spirit. So trust that the Lord will minister to you right where you are as he is moving in this place. If you're able to, just lift your hands. A sign of surrender, a sign of welcome, a sign of adoration. Lord, we are here for you. We are here for you. And we welcome you in this place. Come and have your way. Holy Spirit, teach us how to pray. Because we don't know how to, but you enable us. So help us this evening to seek your face in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Let us welcome Katie Worship.
captive and break every chain.
Hallelujah. So we say, yeah, we call upon your name. Oh, we call on the name of the Lord and we are saved. you 
sing it to the Lord in one accord. And I. great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into my night then through the Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory.
and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll, to open its seals, for you were slain 
and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Oh Lord, and every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. Then the, twi- then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever and ever. Lord, we want to worship you, Lord, in this place. Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord God, for what you've done, how you have redeemed us to God. Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord, that you were the sacrificial lamb, Lord, who poured out your blood for the sins of all mankind, Lord, so that we would be able to stand here before you today, Lord, and give thanks, Lord God, and glorify your precious and holy name. And Lord, as we stand here, Lord, at this prayer meeting tonight, Lord, thinking about all the things that happened, Lord, in the lead up to your death and resurrection, Lord, we can only worship you. We can only say, Lord, all glory, all power, all strength, all honor belongs to you, Jesus. All glory, all power, all strength, all honor, all riches, Lord, they belong to you, Jesus. Jesus, we say, you're worthy. You're worthy. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. You're worthy in this place, Lord, and tonight, those online. Lord, we just want to surrender our lives afresh. Lord, we want to hand you our lives. And Lord, we want to say, Lord, we're your church. Lord, do what you want with us, Lord. Lord, we're your ones. We're your vessels. We're your servants, Lord God. And Lord, we're just looking to you for direction. We're looking to you, Lord, to know what to do, how to do it, Lord God, in the way that you want it done. Lord, we want to say, Lord, that we want to pour ourselves out before you tonight. Lord, where we've been astray, We thank you, Lord, that you are completely just realigning our hearts to your purpose, Lord. Reminding us, Lord, that you care about the prayers of the saints. Lord, when we gather here, you're pleased. And so tonight, Lord God, we thank you that would you have your way. Lord, would you bring that revelation to each of your people. Lord, would you change those hearts. Will you heal those bodies, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Have your way in this place. Let's give the Lord a wonderful clap of praise. Let's raise him up. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you in this place. Amen. 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 I'm going to welcome Pastor Claudette as she comes now. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. Thank you so much, Katie. Worship. So, indeed, a big welcome to our Wednesday evening. The Wednesday before our Easter weekend, a reminder perhaps this evening of why this period in our calendar is so important. So, let me set a scene. Some days before Jesus went to the cross and was crucified, many things happened. Let me read a little bit from the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 26. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. So Jesus was aware of what was going to happen a few days after certain things took place. Different Gospels give slightly different timelines, but I'm taking from Matthew. And the chief priests, verse 3, and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and to kill him, but not during the festival, so there had to be a time. 
Matthew also records that Jesus had gone to Bethany, to the home of Simon the leper, and that a lady came and anointed him with oil. And there was an objection by Judas, but Jesus said in verse 10, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. Then Matthew also in chapter 26 describes the Last Supper. On the day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came and said, where should we have the Passover? And Jesus explains to them where to go, what to do, and what to set up. And then verse 20, when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. So again, he's describing the things that are going to take place in that run-up to his time on the cross. He ate with them, he drank with them. In John, the book of John, it describes that he even washed their feet. So he served them. And then there's a, a, a verse there in verse 31. This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I've risen, I'll go ahead of you. And Peter protests, even if they all fall away, I won't. But Jesus says this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And Peter doesn't believe that prophetic word that was spoken to him. So a number of things take place. A number of things happen leading up. And as we are going through our evening, that's what we want you to have on your hearts. What led up to that cross? What things took place? And what about our own lives? What took place days before we became born again? What significant things happened that shaped the rest of our journey with Jesus Christ? Keep that in your hearts. And let me just present to you what Easter weekend is going to look like. So this Friday at 10.30 a.m., the moment, the moment of the cross, 10.30 a.m., we will take communion together. We will have a sermon from Pastor Andrew, and we will be remembering that that was the day that Jesus went to the cross. On the Saturday, Easter Saturday at 1 p.m., there will be a YouTube film, which we'll show you a little bit about in a second, uh, created by uh, our music director, Jordan. And that will depict the silence that took place between the moment on the cross and what happens on Sunday. And this coming Sunday, we will together celebrate the resurrection at 9 and 11 a.m. Pastor Scott will bring a word to us for Resurrection Sunday. And then in the evening, at, for our six o'clock, we have a worship evening. And this whole day will describe the movement. And Jordan will bring a word in the midst of the worship about the movement. So we have the moment, the silence, and the movement. And as you ponder in your hearts, what was the run-up like to my salvation? And what other things took place leading up to the day that Jesus went to the cross? I'd like you to watch this video of Saturday. And then Pastor Scott is going to come and minister to us. So let's still our hearts. Amen. Day one, Christ died. People were angry that he was being killed. Day two, silence. Can you wait three days? Can you endure three days of not knowing? Who would have thought silence became a movement? The silence of one day. One day without sound equaled a life worth living. The 
humility of silence. The power of patience changed everything. Saturday is such a significant day for us all to reflect and consider and the silence that actually unfolds is very very powerful because it's preparing what will emerge on the Sunday and I would love us now to take a moment now to prepare our hearts as we are going to take communion together as a church family the stewards will facilitate you with the emblems this evening and as we get ready to do that, I would love to take a moment to read some scripture. And then on the back of that, invite each and every one of us to reflect in our hearts all that Jesus did accomplish when he went to Calvary. That he, will, he went willingly, obediently, faithfully to pay the price for you and I for the remission of our sins, that we could have access to the Father that we could enjoy eternal life in the place of eternal hell and condemnation. And in Luke 22, verses 19 and 20, the Word of God reads as follows. He took bread and gave thanks, and he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. He gave thanks. And I believe it's an opportunity for us tonight, Holy Week. We're laying a foundation and a framework for the rest of of the week that will unfold before us. And I wonder if gratitude, thanksgiving, can start to seep into our heart, into our mind, into our life. Not necessarily for the job that you have, the clothes that you wear, the food that's in your fridge, your home, your family, although these things are important. But maybe you can give thanks for Jesus. You can give thanks that he stepped in and he took the place for us. He took on all of the sins of the world. He embraced it with consummate ease, with passion, conviction, desire, and motivation because he loves each and every one of us. And in a world that constantly appraises and appeases and challenges and has conflict in, for some of us, even just accepting that truth will be difficult tonight, that you don't need to do anything to attain God's approval. You don't need to work for his affection or attention, that he's already paid the highest price. Your goal, your, your, your objective as a Christian is to enforce the victory that Jesus achieved for us at Calvary. And so maybe you want to take a moment just to bow your heads as the uh, stewarding team have finished handing out the communion elements. And for a moment, think about the agony that Jesus went through, the emotional trauma of being nailed to a cross in front of a handful of people with his own mother, helpless, unable to do anything. Think of the challenge and the conflict in his own heart, knowing that he had the power, the authority to take himself down if he wanted to, but he chose not to 
because he would have voided everything that he had already achieved and accomplished up to that exact point. Think of the pain barrier as the blood pours out of the side of him, out of his hands, out of his feet. The trauma, the pain that he embraced so that you and I could walk free. He loves you with an everlasting love. This world may discard you. People may disown you. Things may not totally be what you want them to be. But I can assure you tonight, Jesus is all that he says that he is. And he loves you and he accepts you right where you are. And you can come to him now in your own brokenness, maybe in brokenness, problem with your body, brokenness with your finances, brokenness in your family, brokenness in your mind. But you can come to Jesus right where you are and find healing, find acceptance, receive joy, a fresh touch of grace, mercy, journey for the joy of tomorrow and all that it offers us. And then in the stillness of your own heart, move towards thankfulness. What are you thankful for? God loves gratitude. And because God has been so faithful, so consistent, so perfect in all of his ways towards us, it's easy sometimes, isn't it, to, to not be thankful that you got up this morning you didn't just wake up, but you got up. That you have a job to go to. You have family, you have friends. You're walking in freedom. Every stronghold, every addiction, every sin broken off your life. You're walking as an example and as evidence of God's goodness everywhere you place the soles of your feet. And he calls you son, daughter, and he's not just pleased with you, he is very pleased with you. That's our God. He loves you. His mercies are new every morning. Great is the faithfulness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, an opportunity to connect closer and deeper to the heart of Jesus tonight. We all can recall and recount that moment our sins were washed away and he discards them as far as the east is from the west. He blots them out as the word of God declares. But I don't know about you, sometimes we still fall short. Our thoughts are not exactly pure. Our actions are not always godly. Our deeds are not always wholesome. And maybe there's things in our heart, in our mind, in our lives tonight that we need to let go. We need to lay it down willingly, not have it taken from us, but lay it down. But to do that, I believe we need a, a three-step acknowledgement or process. And the first is to simply acknowledge that those things exist in our, in our lives. And for some of us, it may be difficult because we've got so used to behaving and thinking and operating a certain way. But then we need to move beyond acknowledgement to acceptance that these things are hurting us. They're harming our walk with Jesus. They're not helping us. And then from the acceptance, we need to move to abandonment. But to abandon something, it needs to be yours. And you need to lay it down. And after you've abandoned it, in that place, God will bring healing, restoration, order, joy. He'll bring something healthy in the place of those things. And I believe that tonight, we can lay those things at the foot of the cross 
surrendering our hearts afresh to Him and walk in a fresh consecration. What better time to do it than Easter week? The pinnacle of our Christian faith, the forgiveness that's found at Calvary. And so in the stillness of your own heart and life, I encourage you, take some time to reflect on, on those things. And the worship team will join me in a moment, and, and we will sing, and we will worship, and we will give God all the praise for what He did in sending Jesus into this world. But I believe there's power in silence. I believe there's power in forgiveness. And we can live right because Jesus paid the price. So let's live right. Let's live a life that reflects the honor and the holiness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Katie, we have much to be thankful for. We have much to be grateful to God for. But the best is still yet to come. And so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you're welcome to partake in communion Receive that, and then we'll worship the Lord together. God bless you. Thank you for listening.
Are there any thankful people in the house tonight? Are we th any thankful people in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. Should we give God a shout of praise? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Do take your seats for just a moment. We're going to continue our worship now as we get ready to give. And we get ready to give to the work of the Lord here at KT. And so if you need an envelope, the stewards should be able to help you and facilitate you with the white envelopes and a pen if you need to. If you prefer to give electronically, which is the, the preferred method I know many of us do now, the QR code will appear on the screen in just a moment. There's a wonderful couple of verses at the start of Psalm 9 that David declares, I will give thanks to the Lord with my entire heart. I will recount all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exalt your name, and I will sing praises to your name, O Lord Most High. Amen? And that's actually, David's actually on the run, I'm sure we know, in that portion of Scripture. But even in the midst of his trying circumstances, he knows that his heart needs to give thanks to God. Amen? He knows that God has been good. He's able to recount or recall all of the wondrous deeds that God has done and demonstrated in his own life. Therefore, his heart is full of gratitude, but it's full of faith as well, knowing that ultimately God will always make a way. And we know in David's story there that emerges. And the same is true for us as we get ready to give. Amen? that we have an opportunity to be thankful for all that God has done and provided for us, but also we can recall and recount everything that God has already done for us in our lives, and that acts as fuel for what God wants to do in our lives now, but also into the future. Amen? So let's stand together in the house of the Lord as the worship team take us forward, and let's give our tithes and offerings with our thanks and with gratitude for the glory of God. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. He has won the victory. Amen. Let's sing this together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory.
Look at that declaration. Death couldn't hold you down. You are the risen king. We worship you. We thank you. We're in the midst of your presence this evening, acknowledging your work, your journey, your work on the cross and beyond. And we are indeed thankful, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, shall we be better? Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's something about that, isn't it? You can applaud him, but death couldn't hold him down. It holds us down. But he conquered it. Greater than it. Amen. That's why we have a hope of those of our loved ones who have already gone in Christ. Death is not holding them down. They're simply sleeping until they rise in Christ Jesus because he conquered death, hell and the grave. And let us not forget that in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Bless you. Amen. Well, we've been having some incredible prayer times and we're going to come into a, a section of the prayer meeting where are we going to pray? Some of us are going to minister to you right from here out of the stories that led to that day that Jesus went on the cross. So remember earlier I said, and please at home participate in this, what happened days before the cross? There was, of course, Palm Sunday, Hosanna, as we were celebrating last week, where they're rejoicing at this king and they're excited about him as he came into Jerusalem. There was a plot afoot to kill him. And that was God's plan being worked out. There was the anointing at Bethany, where Jesus was with those that he would have called or counted as family. Judas... Did he fulfill a purpose in God's plan? The Last Supper, all of the conversation, the incredible prayer as laid out in the book of John during that Last Supper, the washing of the disciples' feet. How many of you have ever washed another person's feet in here? A Christian brother or sister, I mean. Mm, I've done it. (laughs) Talk to my cell members. Peter's denial predicted and his fierce, you know, defense of himself. I'm not going to do that. Gethsemane, alone. Could you not tarry with me one hour? The deepest evidence of his struggle to go or not, to obey God the Father or not. His arrest his trial, his torture, his ridicule. And remember, this arrest came in the night. The the, the Jewish day starts at 6 p.m. They came in the darkness in the garden, through the night, through what we would call our night, but that was the beginning of their day, was the trial. Into the early hours of the morning, not many people were there, as may be predicted, because he was stolen away. How did he feel? Where are my followers to shout on my behalf? Judas. I'll say no more. And then the fulfillment of that denial that Peter said, I'm I'm not going to deny you, and yet he did. And he came to himself at that moment. His humanity, his weakness, his failure. 
and then the actual day of the death on the cross. We're going to just take a few of those and we're going to pray over our lives and minister. And I'd like to invite Corinne, if you're ready, to come and just share and lead us in prayer out of what we've chosen. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Claude F. Okay, so we are going to look at John 12. Let's have a look at this scripture for us just a moment. As I was sitting there, the Lord just kept saying, what about the sacrifice? What about the sacrifice? What about the sacrifice? And I think what we need to really think about tonight is the sacrifice that Jesus endured and carried out so that we would be free. The greatest sacrifice was paid on the cross of Calvary for our sins. And he was happy to be the sacrifice. Um, I'm going to read John 12. And it tells the story of Mary who breaks the costly oil of spikenard. She makes a sacrifice to honor the Lord. It says, then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There he made him a supper and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii? Sorry, he said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. In other words, leave her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial explaining that she has had a revelation of what is to come next. Mary has had a revelation. She knows exactly what is to come. And you need to not trouble her. You need to leave her alone because what she's doing is good. He said, for the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. And so what Mary does there is she enacts a sacrifice. She, she um, honors the Lord by making a sacrifice of something that actually would have been very precious to her. We know that the oil that was poured out was literally almost a year's wages. And so it was something very precious to her. But she had had a revelation of what was to happen, what was to come. And so she was happy to break that oil right before Jesus' feet and then wash his feet with her hair. And you can imagine what that scene would have looked like. You know, many people were at that house, including his disciples. It would have been a scene that was, would have been very strange, very, you know, un, what's the word? Un, un, unkept, well, it, oh, I've forgotten the word, but it's the word where it's something is against what you would do in society. Abnormal, maybe I would say. And so that's exactly what she does. And what does she do in it? For me, I feel that she shows reverence. She reverences Jesus and she recognizes who she is, who he is. And not only on top of that, is that she shows extreme boldness in doing this, as a woman in that time, she shows boldness. And also what she does is she just explains that from her heart, this is her sacrifice to Jesus. And so I want us to begin to pray and to begin to think about maybe the things that Jesus has called you to sacrifice. Those things that he's put on your heart, that he wants you to sacrifice as a way to honor him and say, Lord, you know, there's many things I could do. There's many things I could have, but I choose you. I actually choose to pour this out before you, just like Mary did. And so as we stand, we're going to just start to pray. If we can all stand together now, we're all going to engage together. But I think sometimes when we hear stories or we read stories, we can disengage ourselves from understanding that actually 
it's, 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 a, it's a story so that we can understand how we also are supposed to respond to Jesus. And so as we just stand here at this moment, I just, just raise your hands to the Lord and we're just going to pray that the Lord would help us to be those who are sacrificial. Sacrificial in our walk with Jesus. Sacrificial in knowing that when we do lay things down, it is good. It is good, as the Bible says in many different places, but I'll say in Mark 10, 30, it says, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time? Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. Reminding us that whatever you leave here, there's nothing that you leave here that you're not going to receive a hundredfold in the age to come into eternity. And so we're going to begin to pray now, just in the spirit, begin to pray in tongues as we remember what Mary did before Jesus' feet, how she poured out her precious oil before the feet of Jesus because she wanted to say to him, I recognize who you are in my life. And because I recognize who you are, I recognize what you're going to do on the cross. I want to pour out everything I have before you to honor you, to reverence you. I want to give you everything I have, Jesus. I want to sit at your feet and I want to say everything that I have is yours anyway. And so tonight, Lord, would you help me to be someone that is sacrificial in my walk, sacrificial in my heart? Lord, when you tell me to wake up and to pray, Lord, would I accept the sacrifice? Lord, when you tell me to present my body as a living temple, holy and acceptable before you. Lord, would I accept that sacrifice? Lord, when you tell me, Lord, to give to someone something that is valuable to me because you want them to have it more than me, Lord, would I make that sacrifice? Oh, Lord, we pray in this place today, Lord, that we would be those that are sacrificial. Lord, would we be those that are able to pour out, Lord God, pour out what you've given us. Lord, would we not be those who withhold? Lord Jesus, as we walk through this week, as we remember what was done in the lead up to Good Friday, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that one of the examples was sacrifice. Lord, you've called for sacrifice. You've called us to be sacrificial Christians, Lord, those who honor you, Lord God, with our lives. And Lord, Lord, I pray, Lord, all over this place, all those watching online, Lord, that you are giving them ideas, Lord, of sacrifice. Lord, you're dropping into their spirit, Lord, what you've called them to give up. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, that they're going to give up what you've called them to. Oh, let's press in in the spirit. Let's press in in the spirit. Let's press in in the spirit. Yes, Lord, we want to give up. Lord, we want to give up those things that you've called us to break. Break before you. Oh, Lord, we don't want to be withholders. Lord, we want to be those that are able to break out before you, Lord God. Break those things that you've given us, Lord, and to show you, Lord, that they don't have any power over our lives. Oh, Lord, I thank you for your people here. I thank you, Lord, that you're calling them to new and higher levels of service in this house. In this house, Lord Jesus. Let's press in, let's press in in the spirit. Those who speak in the spirit, let's speak in the spirit. Let's let the Lord align our hearts with what he's saying to us tonight. What are those things that he wants you to lay down? What are those things that he wants you to break before his feet? Those things that you've held in high regard, that you've kept ahead of him. Thank you, Jesus, that tonight, Lord God, we recognize the example of Mary. Lord, we want to be like Mary. We want to be like Mary, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you teach us to be like Mary, especially, Lord, as we remember everything that you did, Lord, in your sacrifice for us. Jesus, we honor you. We honor you tonight, Lord, and we say thank you. And we say thank you, Lord, that the sacrifices that we will be making, Lord God, will be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm just going to invite Lilith. Bless you. Let's just continue praying in tongues for a little bit more. When we're praying in tongues, we're praying in the Spirit. We're allowing Holy Spirit to pray in us, through us. Let's 
O koze keti kene makoza keti alarabo sheki anamante de bokosa zemante de bakosa larabo shaya malara kete de basoko lara teke lara manda lara toko de baseki alarabo shai. Lord Jesus, we bless you. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Let us ask the Lord to give us a revelation this Easter so that we're not just going through the motions. Let's just press in and ask God this Easter, we want to know you anew. We want to know you afresh. We want to know you more. We want to know the power of the cross in our lives. We want to know the power of the blood of Jesus in our lives. We want to know the power of God in salvation. We are saved. What does that mean? We are redeemed. What does that mean? We are cleansed. What does that mean? Lord, we pray for a revelation of what you have done for us, a fresh revelation in the name of Jesus. We're going to continue praying. Um, there are many people in the crucifixion time. You may have a sit for a moment. We see different characters that Pastor Claudette has mentioned. We see Peter. We see Judas Iscariot. And I don't know about you, but when I'm reading, I think to myself, I don't want to be that one. I could be that one. Am I that one? Does anyone have that moment? Like, Lord, I don't want to be Judas. I pray I never be Judas. But Lord, let my heart never be that hardened. And then we might read about um, Joseph of Arimathea, the one who helped Jesus carry the cross. And we're like, if I'm in the way when Jesus is going, I want to be the one who helps Jesus. Yeah? But there's one character that sometimes we want to be, sometimes we don't want to be. Peter. Peter's like, yes, I will walk on water and let's all do it. And then two seconds later, he's like, I'm sinking. Help me, Jesus. And in Luke chapter 22, verse 31, we see Jesus having a conversation with Peter. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he, Peter, said to Jesus, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. How many of us have those moments? On Sunday, we're like, yeah, I'm fired up for Jesus. Give me the lost. Give me the nations. I'm going to tell everybody about Jesus. And then Monday morning, Jesus is like, hi. I know it's three in the morning, but can we have a chat? We're like, Jesus. Let, let's start when I wake up. Our moments of denial might not be as grand as Peter saying, I do not know Jesus. Sometimes it's just the contradiction between our Sundays and our Mondays. Sometimes it's just the contradiction between when we are with Christian friends and when we're with non-Christian friends. And I wonder if we could take time to just stand together and pray and ask the Lord to forgive us, first of all where our words and our actions have not been in alignment. Can anybody identify with that? Where we're saying, Lord, I'm really passionate about you, but sometimes I just don't say that to my friends. Sometimes the peer pressure causes me to say crucify him instead of I know him. Sometimes I'm ashamed. Sometimes I don't want to identify as a Christian even though I am. All those things we've experienced in one measure or another. Let us stand. Let us stand. Now, how many know that does not come from a place of condemnation? Because the Bible says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But he does convict us. He does say, hey, I'm calling you up higher from where you are. Amen. So let us take a moment and just ask the Lord to forgive us, first of all. Father, forgive us. Forgive us where our passion and excitement on Sunday has not carried through to Monday. Forgive us where we have denied you. Maybe it was not like Peter saying, I do not know you, but our actions have said we're not in alignment with you. Lord, forgive us where our words to our non-Christian friends are not the same words that we say in church on Sunday. Lord, forgive us for the ways that we have denied you one way or another. Jesus, we ask that you would forgive us whether it was because we were ashamed of you, whether it was because of peer pressure. When Peter was standing around the fire and they said, hey, 
we saw you hanging around with him. And he said, I know it was not me. I do not know him. May you forgive us where we have been like that. Perhaps it was because of fear. Fear that maybe they would arrest him and crucify him as well. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. And we thank you that this day you do not condemn us. You do not condemn us. Church, I wonder, I wonder if we could repeat, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I am not condemned because I am in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And Father, we believe and we receive the forgiveness that you have for us this day. There's one more point I would like us to repent and ask the Lord to help us. Peter was so eager. We don't know where his eagerness would come from, but I wonder, I wonder whether there was an element of him trying to prove himself. He's like, Jesus, you will not, you will not regret making this. You will not regret calling me. You will not regret it. I'm going to be all sold out for you. But in his own effort, he could not do it. How many know in our own effort, we cannot do it? In our own effort, we can't call on him day and night. In our own effort, we can't pray. We can't sing. We can't obey except by his power. Amen. So let us repent where we have tried to earn his love because it's actually not possible. He has given us his love freely. Amen. Let's just say, dear Lord, please forgive us where we try to earn your love, where we try to prove our worth to you, forgive us. And we ask for a revelation of your love for us. Amen. I believe Jesus hanging on the cross, Peter looked at him. And Peter thought, Right, he's died thinking that I hate him. But three days later, Jesus makes a point to find Peter and say, Peter, do you love me? And three times Peter had denied Jesus. Three times Peter gets to reaffirm, I love you, Lord. You know I love you, Lord. The love that he saw on the cross, he was able to now replicate the love that Jesus has for us is what enables us to love him. Amen? So how about if we ask the Lord for a fresh revelation of his love? Just call out to him in your own way. Jesus, reveal your love to us anew this Easter. Open our eyes to see the power of the cross. Open our eyes to see this love so amazing that you would give your everything to get us Said You said that you leave the 99 to go after the one. And every one of us in this room can identify that you reached out for each one of us. And for that, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And we pray that this Easter, we will have a fresh revelation of your love. And from that place of revelation, we will go out into the world and show your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a praise for his love. Amen. That, that's a really important point to finish on, that we have a fresh revelation, yes, do please take your seats, of God's love. Because what I'm about to touch on is very sensitive, but some people need to hear need to receive this ministry. And unless that foundation had been laid, that we have a revelation of God's love for us, it would be more difficult. Let me read from Matthew 26 again, verse 14. Then one of the 12, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him, 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over to the Lord. Verse 23, Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me 
will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it's written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi? And Jesus said, You have said so. What's difficult about this story? If all of this was part of God's plan, did God intend for a man's life to be wasted, to serve another purpose? Hold that question because I'm not going to answer it tonight. But we need to do some study in these areas so that those questions that commonly come up are answered. I'm looking at what he went through. Perhaps an excitement that if he, and he didn't see it as a betrayal, gave, gave Jesus up, maybe the priests would listen. Maybe he would do a miracle. And maybe they would see that he really is our king and our lord and our savior. Was that his heart? Or was it truly denial? Was it truly um, betrayal? We can't, can't know unless we delve into the scriptures. We're not doing that tonight. We want to pray. But what was the end result of the error that he made? It led to his death. Nobody killed Judas. Judas took his own life. As we reflect on our walk in those days before we came into a relationship with Jesus Christ, as we reflect on all of these different things that led up to Jesus going to the cross, has anyone experienced thoughts of suicide because they were so desperate in life situations? Does anybody here have family members who passed that way? We cannot run away from the hard things in life. We cannot run away from the results sometimes of when a person is so ridden with guilt and failure that they decide they cannot go on anymore. But we in here this evening and at home, we can do something about it in the way of prayer, in the way of standing together, in the way of standing with each other. So I brought this point so that I could lead us in a time of prayer. I would ask Sam, please, if you're able to come and play gently for us. I would ask that if anybody is standing in the gap for somebody in that situation or standing for yourself because it's been an experience of a friend or a loved one that you knew, or if you yourself want to be sure I will never take my thoughts that deeply that I would want to say no more. I can't do this. Could Judas have cried out, I did wrong, but Lord, forgive me? Could he? I don't know. But we can because the work of the cross is already done. And we don't have to be the ones who fail or live in that desire of depression or hopelessness like Judas did, leading up to the glorious time when Jesus would be on the cross. Instead, we can lay it at the feet of Jesus. I'm going to ask some people that are here tonight, I'm very blessed to have Pastor Akusa, Pastor Jacqueline, to have Lily's, Corin, Brother Felix, if you're able, to come and stand at the front. Other ministry team people, if you, this doesn't apply to you and you want to help. Because if you this evening have in any way struggled with thoughts of suicide or you want to stand in the gap for somebody, or you want some healing from something in the past. Or just those feelings of, I have had enough. 
I'm going to break the spirit that was upon Judas over our lives. Over your lives at home. And if you want somebody to agree with you, then do come forward. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we have seen the glorious anointing, the breaking of the alabaster oil. We have seen Peter's up and down, but Judas seemed to have only one path, that I would betray and then I would die remorseful at his act. As those at home stretch forward to be ministered to by your Holy Spirit. And others come forward in here this evening. I break every suicidal spirit from off of every life in the name of Jesus Christ. No one in here, under the sound of my voice, will be troubled by thoughts that I cannot go on. Because each life is hidden in Christ Jesus, in his death, and in his resurrection. Everyone suffering with depression, not necessarily thinking of suicide, but thinking, I can't go on anymore. I can't face another day. I break that lie in the name of Jesus Christ. I stand now, Lord, for everyone who has lost somebody this way, a friend, a family member, or just broken by the story of a celebrity who has done the same. Bring your healing power. Bring your healing power to brokenness. I remember a mother and a daughter just a few months ago came to me. They weren't sure that the end of the story was good, but they came to tell me that on their way here, they saw a lady on a bridge about to jump off. And trying to intervene, she was startled and she fled whether she went to another place or whether as the paramedics and the emergency services had been called and were coming, whether she was found or not, God had used this mother and daughter to intervene. Now we cry out for any in that position now that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let us be the intercessors. For those who may be watching on YouTube or Facebook and they're not born again and this is how they feel, but you led them there. We intervene and we stand in the gap that their minds will be changed and they will cry out and reach out to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Protect us, Lord, from false thinking, from lies, from reacting to our desperation instead of turning to you and teach us how to turn and keep on turning to you that we will live and we will not die. That we will bring our shame, our guilt, our failures to your feet every time and we will be healed and we will be restored by you. Bring your protecting power over each and every life in here. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen and amen. If any of you at home identify and you feel like you would have wanted somebody to be by your side tonight, please give us a call so that our duty pastor may be able to speak to you tomorrow on our pastoral helpline or or, or it really is our main number, 0207 908 1700 
For others you want to continue to be ministered to here this evening, I would like to ask the worship team to just bring a final song of ministration as we minister to those in need. Don't forget to come and join us this Friday. Let's walk out the moment. Let's take communion together again. Let us be here for those who perhaps will visit from the community and don't know you. Let's be a vessel for the Lord this Friday. And on Saturday, invite your friends. Watch a short film at one o'clock. Tell them about it. And come and join us on Sunday for our 9-11 and our 6 p.m. special services in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.
Peeling back the dark with the burning light of noon. 
who is standing on the mound, who is on the earth below, who is bigger than the heavens and the lover of my soul. Sing that one time. Who is moving on the walls? Who is holding up the moon? Who's hidden by the dark? With a burning light of noon. Who's standing on the mountain? Who is on the earth below? Who is hidden in the heaven? And the lover of my soul. And the lover of my soul. Who's moving on the walls? Who's holding up the moon? Who is peeling back the dark with the burning light of noon? Who is standing on the mountain? Who is on the earth below? Who is bigger than the heavens? And the lover of my soul. Sing that one time. Who is moving on the wall? Who is holding up the moon? With a burning light of noon Who's standing on the mountain Who is on the earth
is moving on the walls. Who is holding up the moon? Who is peeling back the dogs? With the burning light of noon. Who is standing on the mound? Who is on the earth below? Who is bigger than the heavens? And the lover of my soul. Sing the one time. Who is moving on the wall? Who is holding up the moon? Who's hidden by the dark? With the burning light of noon. Who's standing on the mountain? Who is on the earth? Who's moving on the walls? Who's holding up the moon? Who is peeling back the dogs with the burning light of noon? Who is standing on the mound? Who is on the earth below? Who is bigger than the heavens? And the lover of my soul. Sing the one time. Who is moving on the wall? Who is holding up the moon? With a burning light of noon, who's standing on the mountain? Who is on the earth?
is moving on the walls who's holding up the moon who is peeling back the dogs with the burning light of noon Who is standing on the mound? Who is on the earth below? Who is bigger than the heavens? And the lover of my soul. Sing that one time. Who is moving on the wall? Who is holding up the moon? Who's hidden by the dark? With the burning light of noon. Who's standing on the mountain? Who is on the earth? Who's moving on the walls? Who's holding up the moon? Who is peeling back the dogs with the burning light of noon? Who is standing on the mound? Who is on the earth below? Who is bigger than the heavens? And the lover of my soul. Sing that one time. Who is moving on the wall? Who is holding up the moon? With a burning light of noon Who's standing on the mountain Who is on the earth
is moving on the walls who's holding up the moon who is peeling back the dogs with the burning light of noon Who is standing on the mound? Who is on the earth below? Who is bigger than the heavens? And the lover of my soul. Sing the long time. Who is moving on the wall? Who is holding up the moon? Who's hidden by the dark? With the burning light of noon. Who's standing on the mountain? Who is on the earth? Who's moving on the walls? Who's holding up the moon? Who is peeling back the dogs with the burning light of noon? Who is standing on the mound? Who is on the earth below? Who is bigger than the heavens? And the lover of my soul. Sing the long time. Who is moving on the wall? Who is holding up the moon? With the burning light of noon, who's standing on the mountain? Who is on the earth? Oh, yeah, the God. 